Welcome back to another Adobe Live. You all know this by now, but just for the sake of it, we're here every day, 12 to 1, for a creative chat live from your sofa. And today I promised you double the creativity and inspiration because we have the Yarza twins with us. Um, so it's looking really cozy on here. We have a lot of people on. Um, how are you both doing? Everything fine. Really excited for, that, for this. <laughs> Hello to hey. everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Hi, Marta. And of course, we have uh, my co-host, Stephanie. Stephanie, how are you? Did you recover from our XG session yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to recover. I could have gone on until now. <laughs> we have more of it coming anyway, so I'm sure we'll have um, Stephanie jumping on as well again. Um, but yeah, it's just a, such an outstanding female panel on this session. So I have to say, before we jump in, I feel really lucky to be with all of you. Um, so yeah, let us know in the chat. How you, of course, yeah, um, and yeah, let let us know in the chat how you're all doing, and also say happy birthday to Tim. He's gonna hate me for saying this, but happy birthday, Tim! Again, <laughs> it's his birthday today, and he's spending his time with us. Um, but happy Evan, Marta, please, <laughs> exactly. Now we start. Happy again. birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday. Loving this, um, Evan, Marta. I mean, you already started, so please introduce yourself. Um, tell us where you're based, and yeah, introduce yourself. So we are, I'm Eva and that's Marta. Hello. We, we are isolating, like I guess all of you guys. So we are both in our homes, not in the office. That's why we're separated. <laughs> so we are from Spain. You may have felt it from our accent, but we're based in London where we have a design studio. What we run is like a small studio and yeah, it's the two of us. Awesome. And what are you going to be sharing today? Yeah, so today we are going to talk a bit, a bit about our experience opening our own studio because like now the economic hit will be quite hard for everybody globally, especially, especially in the, yeah, the students, industries. Hmm, recent graduates and, and young designers are going to struggle a lot, so yeah. Yeah, so when we graduated, we were also living in a crisis period in Spain and we managed to open three years ago our own studio. So maybe our experience helps uh, young students to like get inspired, get ideas and know how to drive a bit their careers. Yeah, we, as, uh, we arrived as immigrants to London with no contacts and out of this uh, massive crisis that was in 2008. So we want to share how we could make it happen and how you create your own opportunities. So uh, we hope this helps you guys to just know how to start your own careers. Sounds great. A lot of inspiration today for everyone who's joining in. And some of our audience might have seen you before as well, because you're familiar with the Adobe family as well. And um, I hope you can tell us a bit more about those projects today. Yeah, we were able to be at Adobe Max, like, a couple of years ago, presenting one of our projects, we will talk about it, and it was really, really exciting. We are always following Adobe videos. <laughs> and we follow you, so this is great. It's a, it's a weird <laughs> kind of, uh, stalker situation from both sides. <laughs> 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 but should we get started and uh, find out a bit more about the studio or wherever you want to, you know, kickstart the story, um, let's pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we are the Yartha twins because we are twins and our surname is Yartha, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to Eva start... Was born, Eva was born after than me, after three minutes. <laughs> yeah. So we want to start how we are from... We were born in Vigo, which uh, no one knows about. Whenever we say I'm Spanish, everyone is like, oh, you're from Barcelona. No. Are you from Madrid? No. <laughs> We are from Vigo. No one knows about Vigo at all. And it's, it is a small town where really nothing really happens. So you see all the creative industry as something really far from you and something that is not achievable. So you need to fight really hard. So we want to show you a little bit of our local culture so you know where we're from. This is a, a typical instrument in Galicia. The Scottish is just a pure copy, <laughs> no, from the original one. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we had a lot of Scottish people on the other day, and now they're coming back and they're like, what is this? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I think the <laughs> Scottish is the original one to finish the truth. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, so Galicia has amazing beaches, but it has no tourists because the, we are in the Atlantic Ocean, so the water is really cold and it's always raining. 
They call it actually the Scotland of Spain. There you so, go. <laughs> yeah, this is in Galicia, this big Galician. So this is all the words to describe rain because it rains so much. We have a lot of types of rain. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, that, that applies really well to London as well, right? I think these days, yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about this before. <laughs> I, I actually think that in London, it rains more. <laughs> Probably. So when people think about the Spanish food, everyone thinks about paella. But in Galicia, we don't eat paella. Well, sometimes we do. We eat uh, octopus. <laughs> so that's our typical dish. But Galicia <laughs> is very tasty. <laughs> yeah, Galicia is more famous for its uh, Trump grandmother. Yeah. So a typical grandmother in Galicia. And she just <laughs> looks like Trump. <laughs> I love this. You guys are giving us the full history rundown. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah now, now you know more where we come from. <laughs> this, is, this is not our grandmother. This is just like one Galician typical I Come hope so because if you if I wouldn't be happy if I was her <laughs> get people into your presentation. Yeah. No, she just went viral. Our family is actually did. not from Galicia, but but we were born there. <laughs> yeah, so taking this in mind, we went from Vigo to London. <laughs> It's awesome because we can already see your um, kind of typography work and inspiration. And I just, yeah, I mean, we're go we're getting there. We can tell, but it's it's great seeing you. Yeah, we're we'll going get there. Don't no worry. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm clearly excited, like running ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, so well, we, we decided to write to London where we had big dreams. We came to study and Central San Martin, San Master, and we wanted to one day open our own studio. So this is us many years later with our own studio. <laughs> Yeah, where we managed to grow a bit. So, yeah, the video is a bit wonky, but we are growing in the video. Yeah, so we have <laughs> high expectations of London. We thought we will meet Mr. Bean in the, in the plane, that the Queen will receive us for an English breakfast, <laughs> and that we could have a bulldog that will be able to skateboard. Love it. But Did you have any of this? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is a reality. It's <laughs> raining. Aww. And raining. And raining. <laughs> and it was a lot very overwhelming. It's London is very expensive and it's a horrible city. Like, But we thought we can make it. So we bought an English bulldog, but he never kind of mastered the skills of skateboarding. <laughs> This is him trying. <laughs> the video goes with a bit of delay, so... Yeah. Okay, sorry, did you get it? Yeah. Oh, good, we got it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, maybe Marta can jump on here, how we started before, when we were in Vigo, uh, being a little bit of... Um, we wanted to change the world, so tell them what we did, Marta. Okay, so when we were 18, we wanted to change the world, like many people, hopefully, when they are 18. So we, at this time, we didn't know what was graphic design or anything, but I'm going to tell you a story of something that has nothing to do with graphic design, but help us to open our own studio, which was impressive because we didn't look for it. So when we were like this age, we went to London and they were uh, restoring the Tate Modern building. It was like an old electric factory and all the neighbors made a campaign to stop the demolition of this building and transform it into a museum. So that really inspired us, especially being from Vigo. Vigo is a city that doesn't have cathedrals, it doesn't have big museums, it doesn't have art in the street. So the only heritage that people from Vigo has are industry and industrial buildings. So there is a factory, this one that we see on the screen, which is called Panificadora. This building used to be a bread factory and it has a lot of value because it's one of the first reinforced concrete buildings in Spain. And it's like, you can see the sea behind it. It looks like crap, but this is in the zone zero of Vigo, in the pure center. So I, we always had this vision of this building being restored and transformed into a museum. So inspired by the Tate Modern, we decided to collect signatures and try to help this building. So we were really pushing it and we got 5,000 signatures, which for the size of Vigo is quite big. And 
somehow we managed to make this building a, a protected building and yeah. it was safe and we were very happy because like at that moment we we realized that it's possible with good intentions to change the world if you really well, fight for it I would like to cut with you one second because this is the yeah. original poster we did before learning about design, which is horrible. So we want to tell you are that there is hope for everyone, you know? <laughs> yeah. In design. <laughs> we improve a bit after. <laughs> yeah. So Marta, okay. what we did after. So yeah, like this building was safe. Later we didn't know what graphic design was. So I went to study construction engineering to Madrid and Eva went to study fine arts. And we were there studying, and this building was still safe, but abandoned. So somehow we finished our studies, and, and different things in life made us go to London to study graphic design. At that moment, we said, okay, we need to do a self-initiated project that, despite it doesn't exist, we can practice this way, how to do a branding. And yeah, we, we, thought, we had this dream of making our stu own studio, but we didn't have any clients, we didn't have any contacts, we were hardly able to get internships, so we thought we need uh, to improve our portfolio, and the only way is by doing a personal project that we're really into it. Yeah, so basically we thought, okay, there is this building that we saved years ago, Panificadora, that is still abandoned. Why don't we make the branding or the identity of this building Imagine that it became a museum. So that way we start working. The first thing we got is the panificadora, the entrance typography. And from there, we designed the typography of panificadora with the whole letters. So that was the first step. Second, we had to choose some brand colors and we pick up the ones from the flag of Vigo, which are red and white. Also, this building is very constructivist. So we, we needed to make a design that matched this style of architecture. So with the silos uh, of the building, we designed these geometrical cylinders that we will be part of a, a very flexible brand system. So that way we could have like uh, leaflets or cards and, and many of the brand elements. So yeah, like here you can see some of the envelopes and papers, some book designs, everything. So for us, this was just a, a design practice. We, we just wanted to, to show that we were able to design things. But somehow, I think we published it in Behance. Yeah, we decided yeah. to publish the project. Yeah, we decided to publish it. Somehow this project, someone saw the story of the building, the, the twins that save a building through graphic design. And it started be being very viral. Like we got many interviews in China, United States. It was mental for us because we were nobody. And somehow this, all this news arrived out to our local council. And, and they actually read it and, and thought that it was a great idea to relaunch this project. So, so they make a real plan for save this building with a real budget and, and a real architecture project. So yeah, now it's, it's in process of developing, which is a bit uh, complicated. It takes time because they need to take, uh, take possession of the building, which has different owners. So they are in the court and everything, but yeah, it's going to happen and it's going to host a, a cooking school. And, and some events uh, areas and club areas and things like that. So yeah, we're yeah. very happy. It just teaches that, us that we were no one, but still we could change the world through design. So that was quite encouraging in the beginning of our careers. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now uh, this, this building, uh, we help it, but also this building helped us to be known and to start our own career. Clients were starting to approach us, and we were able to quit our jobs. So now uh, our, our studio mainly divides by two main pillars, which are typography and illustration. Yeah, so we thought, how can we create a new style of illustration that is, represents portraits in a different way to what we've seen before? 
So we had a look at all the painters we admire. This is, I think it's called, you know, Rembrandt, right? This is Picasso, that's a uh, Warhol. You have to Frida go Kahlo. slower. Ah, sorry, Frida Kahlo as well. It's like artists we absolutely love. And we thought how we can create our own style. That's Dali, which is amazing as well. And that's a, a San Xiaogan. So we created this kind of style inspired by people who live in, in London and Surditch. We thought it was really cool for this. And we developed it. And yeah, we like these things plas as well. plastic looking people, a bit artificial, very trendy. Yeah. Yeah, this is a project we did later for Huawei using this kind of style. The thing is that uh, this personal style help us develop. Oh, sorry. I just. I'm gonna put a video which is a little bit loud, so just guys, if you can put your volume a little bit down. Uh, so we decided how can we take this style and do something, and we made this. for American Apparel, we contact our friends who was musician and we say, look, we want to do this really cool idea. We thought it can be a, like a critic to empty fashion and like how it's like a commercialist and stuff. So we decided to contact American Apparel and we thought this they will love it. This is going to be their new campaign. This is going to be the best of the world. So we contact the creative director and of American Apparel. We sent him the video and he never replied. And we thought, that okay. That was very brave. <laughs> yeah, he must be like a really busy man. So let's contact the art director. We contact the art director as well, never got a reply. So then we contact the designer, then we contact the freelance designer, then we contact the intern, no one ever replied. And we thought, oh, this is such a failure. But we thought, let's just save it in our portfolios online because you never know what will happen. And we thought it was a failed project, but then something else happened. Oh. And yeah. Eva, just to interrupt you uh, right here, because we have a couple questions that are starting to come up. And we're yeah. really at the beginning of the studio, right? Or your first kind of project. And um, we have some people like James, who's asking about the relationship between you two and how that kind of uh, started off and how, you know, was it obvious for you two to work together? And um, James, for example, has been saying that, you know, he has twin sisters. Um, how has it been, yeah, just in terms of choice to work together and making those creative uh, you know decisions, but also right now, if we jump to today, um, how much being apart or together is important to you as well? Cool. So, well, we've always been kind of creative. So, since childhood, we were doing projects together. Like, we will put a goal and then make it. Like, one day we wanted to do the longest drawing in history, so we start drawing this street, and the drawing is like one meter long. <laughs> But it helped us to show collaboration and we kind of adapt everyone's style and we both implied ideas. So I think it comes from this kind of period in our childhood. And eventually when we grew up, we uh, start with, I studied in Central St. Martins and then Marta as well. So uh, when Marta was studying, we decided to start collaborating with fashion students there. So doing videos for them and stuff. And that's how we started collaborating. And I guess it became kind of a natural thing because it's hard to work with your sibling, but on the other hand, it's easier because you can be sincere when something is not working. No one is going to be offended. And I don't know if that answers, but I think we are very comfortable working with each other. So it's, it's working. <laughs> nice, that's very healthy. <laughs> 
Thank you. <laughs> Very refreshing. No, but go, go ahead. That was my interruption for now. I'll oh, no worries. More questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's anything. <laughs> yes. So um, it was Biceland uh, Weed Week, in which it was a week dedicated entirely to weed. So they even sent a a, a, a split to the to to the exterior space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the space. So Baisland contacted us and they said, hey, we saw your video for American Apparel and we want you to do something. We're going to do a series in which the um, presenter is going to be, I think it was 40 days high smoking weed and see what happened and they will record it. So they wanted the title credits and they wanted us to make them. So it was the second time after the Panificadora project that we did a personal project which could have been a complete fail. We did it just for passion. And this is bringing us a new project. So we thought that was quite really cool. So this is the video we made them. As you can see, it has a lot to do. As well, the sound may be high. Sorry for that. So the, um, the series, as you can see, is called Stone. So yeah, for us, it was really important to understand how if you do things with passion and even creative projects by personal projects, you may not find collaborations, but you can do it on your own. You, you can do a portfolio. You can build a portfolio that's going to bring you clients. Like when we started doing these videos, we didn't know anything about animation, anything about 3D, and we kind of teach ourselves how to do it because we didn't have the skills. So sometimes you don't have the collaboration. So just learn coding or learn basic things. And slowly, you, if you know what you want to build, you can make it. So that would yeah, be like, nice advice. Like before, thinking what you can't do, think what you want to do. And later, you will find a way to do it. Like, for example, with these videos, we couldn't make the music. But our friend Daniel Hunter, who is a great musician, jumped in. So that's the thing. Like, you need to don't cut your wings. And first, uh, think about the idea. And later, think about the, the production of it. Yeah. Not before. And Marta, what was, uh, to interrupt you again with a question from Lisa, what was the kind of learning from this American apparel experience of, you know, investing what you could in approaching people? And how do you recommend now looking back, you know, approaching those big companies? And um, I guess, you know, the, you didn't make it this time, but it led to another project. So what was the kind of learning in terms of making it at the beginning? So the first thing is that um, it really helped us to learn the programs better, to learn how to do a project with more quality, how to collaborate with external people. So that is a learning, I think. But as well, I think it was very, very helpful to, to, show, to show your work out there. Like maybe these big companies didn't reply, but... Nowadays, they don't even reply to me when we approach them. So it doesn't make a difference in that way. But in, on another hand, you never know who is going to watch it. And you never know who is going to like it and want something similar. Because one thing that brands like, and this is very important, is that they don't want the potential out of you. They want what you have done before, and they want that, maybe with a variation or something. But normally, they, they don't care if you have great ideas, but you don't know how to develop them. They want to see the ideas, to trust you, because it's their money, and you know, obviously. Great, great advice. And Rufus is with us in the chat, and he's saying, yep, it's never personal. So um, it's about your work and what you can show, right? But I guess the learning from this was also just keep going and try with <laughs> something else, and you can reuse something that you've already done. And, you're, you know, I guess this, this is really frustrating to hear, but the whole yeah, learning curve um, is, <laughs> is the key. Yeah, yeah. At, at least you improve every day, right? So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Shall we go with this one, Marta? Yeah, so this is the project we were able to present at Adobe Inks, which HP, the printer, printing company, which is amazing. I know some of them are watching us, so hello. <laughs> so, uh, HP was presenting a new software called D4D, which is very useful for probably many of you. It's a, a plugin that you put into Illustrator or an InDesign, 
And, and that way you can make millions of variations out of one project. We will explain it now. So for make the campaign of this software, they call us, which, which was really amazing. And Sala so Samos for make the strategy as well and, and a bit of, of direction. So we call them, we, we wanted to collaborate with Smirnoff and through a bottle of a Smirnoff of a special edition present this software. So it was a pure teaching graphic design process about everything. So the first of all, we needed to design these unique variations and the, the theme was diversity. So everything had to be different, but the same at the same time. So we create 21 patterns out of the eyebrow of the Smirnoff logo. You can yeah. see here some of them. The, the Smirnoff bottle is called Smirnoff number 21. Yes, that's where we get the number from. Yeah, here you can see all the crazy patterns. Yeah. And later, we chose a color palette. You can see it in the screen. Yeah, the guys told us that the printers can print in seven inks, which is gonna give you like a, uh, like a quality, like if it's RGB colors in the screen. So that was really exciting for us. And then, yeah. yeah. Later, we created a master pattern because the software also have a, a, has a capability that you can create a master pattern, zoom in, zoom out, and that way create infinite variations of one pattern. You can see the main one example in the left and later the two examples of what you can do. So we had everything attached together and now we just needed to design the people. So we created 21 crazy hats where we will apply all these patterns and also 21 bodies where yeah. we will also apply this pattern. So the program can choose a random hat with a random pattern, with a random color palette, a random body and a random head. Yeah, um, this, this may be confusing for people to visualize, but if you think of a bottle, we have to tell the program, we're going to have a background, then one hat, one face and one body. And then the program, what it does is that you make like 21 hats, 21 bodies, 21 uh, faces and 21 backgrounds. And then the program itself automatically will kind of uh, switch from one to another. So you can print as many variations as possible, if it makes sense. Yeah, I think you have now some examples, no? Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. So here you can see the end result, like a random hat with a random pattern, with a random color palette, random body and our random background. That way we could like make millions of them. Um, it was really exciting because as we chose like this very poppy color palette, it was like a color explosion, explosion in your eyes. <laughs> Looks awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> We have and someone yeah, asking in the chat uh, what the plugin was that you used. I think you said for InDesign. Um, it's called D4D. It, we used it for Illustrator. I think they were developing as well in design. So it's okay. something to contact them. Yeah, HP is always very helpful about this software. And um, yeah, people is sharing their creations are, are really exciting. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are interested, you can drop us an email and we can put you in contact with them. Amazing. You're going to get, you know, all these people <laughs> dropping you emails <laughs> saying hi. <laughs> Maybe don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so that was the final bottles. Looks great. Yeah, so we printed like 500, but if you see all the variations, we didn't count that. I think it's like billions of versions which is quite cool. Yeah. And that's our parents' dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good. it's with the lay, I think, no? Yeah, you got it? Cool. Yeah. So now we're going to speak to you about another personal project. We really wanted to learn to develop typographies. And so we thought how to make our own typeface. And we start researching on vintage posters and like uh, factories. And we found this kind of typographic style that was lost. It's called DSTIG. And we found it in posters in between 1910s and 1930s in Netherlands, London, as well in 
in America and Germany, I think. So these are some examples. What yeah, I like thought, we, yeah. we discovered that making these dot edges to the letters was really, really trendy at the beginning of the 20th century. So yeah, yeah so it was a thought, really exciting thing. <laughs> yeah, we thought to make our own typeface that to honor the, the first poster we approached this, it was Batavier, the brand. So we created a new Batavier typeface, which is like that. We made the whole alphabet and we launched it online. So this was like another project, personal project we really enjoyed and it was really fun to make. And it teaches us a lot. We learned how to make typefaces and it was really exciting. Yeah, and, and then, it got, uh, it's nice that attention, which we are very thankful for. It's nice yeah. that it's a, a design magazine. So for yeah. all the designers, it might be very interesting to watch it. Yeah, so uh, they were rebranding at that moment Formula E, which is the electrical Formula One for electric cars. And they told us they really love the concept of saving a typeface from the past and bringing it back. They kind of do the same thing with the Formula E. They take like racing cars, but they transform them into something new through electrical and they reinvent something old. So they thought your typeface is really amazing for our brand. So it became like the official typeface for them. And uh, this is uh, some elements, brand elements. And we think that we can see it's another personal project that got really far. And, you know, we have our typeface in racing cars, which is amazing. How long did it take you to develop that font? So it took in the beginning a couple of months like to make the whole thing, but then it took like up to six months to perfectionate all the spaces and all the like the file itself, right? It takes a lot of time. So yeah, but I think I think if you master the program it must be shorter. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to master it. <laughs> Yeah, so it was um, another example of a personal project that gave us a client and a big project. So it was really cool. And now we're going to... Do you sometimes feel that... Um, so, uh, sorry to interrupt, but do you have oh, sometimes no. a kind of um, this tie to home as well in terms of Spanish clients who approach you? Do you feel that you, that has kind of a special place in your heart? Or um, do you still have the kind of... Uh, yeah, that tie to, to any clients that are based in Spain or how is it now being in London in terms of creative community and all your contacts? So yeah. uh, we basically came to study to London. That's why we remain here because things mm -hmm. start working out. But we work internationally, like mainly online with many clients all over the world in every country. So obviously when a client comes from Spain for us, it's really, really nice. But yeah, we have clients that we love in the United States, in, in, in all Europe, continental Europe, a lot in UK, obviously. So yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Um, this, this news client is actually Spanish, so it was really... <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> that was a good transition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just in time. <laughs> so, so this is a Spanish magazine. It has now 26 years. It's called Neo2. Neo it's a, and, it's a yeah. Spanish culture magazine. It showcases all the trendy music, people, the actors, actresses, uh, design, art, fashion. Everything. Yeah. So yeah, they fashion. told us, guys, we want to rebrand. And this was the brief. We want to rebrand every year. And it needs to be very trendy because we want to be up to date with all the new trends. So it needs to reflect that. So we started with the logo which we thought, since they showcase art, we thought as a concept to create kind of a fluid logo because it represents like water, right? So the arts is not like today you have cubism and tomorrow you have minimalism. It's kind of flowing like a river slowly changing and mutated and suddenly you have one style that you can mark in history and next another one. So we wanted to represent that through the logo and kind of moving uh, like slowly, it looks kind of dynamic yet it's like static. So just to give you an idea, this was kind of the process to make the logo step by step. So it takes ages. And that's one visual we made with it. <laughs> so yeah, we thought how to make the magazine. This is some of the first covers because now it's the sec second year. This is the first year. And we kind of played a lot with typefaces. We selected five typefaces that were uh, born in that year and just apply them. And this is one of the covers, and that's uh, some of the 
that some Jane, of the brand yeah, James sorry. asking we have a question uh, sorry to you throw okay? that in oh, no which worries. software did you use to create animations do you outsource or do you both create everything yourselves so, so when you are such a small studio it's difficult to outsource sometimes especially when you are starting so we just learn ourselves and we normally mix this software which is Cinema 4D for the 3D, um, After Effects for building like um, graphics, which is from Adobe, and Premiere for later building color correction, things like this. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, so we thought that typography was really important for this project. That's why we kind of mixed really special typographies. These ones were for this year. One of those was donated by the type, typeface and the other is like we, we found it and it looks really cool. And that's kind of some brand elements. And this is the magazine when we first rebranded. it. We uh, really wanted to not have a grid to make every spread like special and different because that will give personality to the whole thing. So. This is some of the way we created. This is a double spread. I think I'm still in the contact card, no? Are you guys? No, it's the case not. OK. There's another of the spreads uh, where, like, you can see typography plays a big importance. And by the way, girls, we have some really great feedback on all the projects. I have to oh, throw that in as well. Not oh, a really? question to, to poke you, but Patrick <laughs> is saying, I love this project because it allows for constant growth within the sentences, as well as their relationship with the poses on the covers. And Jonathan is saying, I'm going to run out of tabs with all these things to review later on. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for, for your nice words. So, well, um, this year we kind of rebranded for a second year with them. So they more or less became the same philosophy of brand, but we changed typefaces. And you can see here some spreads. That's another one with Louis Vuitton and a new cover. And this is uh, this is this amazing photographer. He's called, I don't know how to pronounce it, Biel Cap Jones. And he's amazing. So we kind of use his photos. Another one, yeah, and that was the uh, new Neo 2. So yeah, um, this is Converse, Converse approaches. They said, we're gonna do like a select five creatives from London, female creatives, and we want to show them. So just do something for us that it represents creativity and it's completely free. You can do whatever you want. So we thought, we asked them, can we do a typography project? No. So with, okay, let's add a typography in this project, but it's not gonna be legible. So it looks more like an illustration. So that's the typeface, it's called Converse. And we made these videos, which let me try to put the sound. And they feature us in their stories. I'm gonna show you a few seconds. Sweet words. They are the twins, and we are a creative duo. So you can get the idea. Uh, okay, I didn't even see it. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, basically, we kind of learned a lot about 3D with those pro that program, and it was really exciting to work with Converse with total freedom. So, it was really cool with them. Yeah, also our, our approach to typography made Adidas also approach us because as I say, like it never worked for us when we approach a brand, they always have to come to us. So they, they wanted to launch a campaign for the World Cup in Sordich. Sordich is a neighborhood in London, which is very trendy. And they wanted to do a, a place there to people to come together and they needed a little campaign. So we designed some posters and they gave us 
a typography which many, with many families and a color palette. So here you can see the result. We, as, a, as a typography had so many families, we decided to mix between them and create like quotes that inspire people to, to be more self-confident in, in their life and more teamwork orientated and to provoke change and a bit have passion for life. So yeah, so yeah you can see here the, the result posters. So we didn't transform at all the typeface, it's like all the different wages. And we thought, how can we make, following Adidas' new brand guidance, how can we make something that doesn't look Adidas at all? So, yeah, this is the way. Yeah, and we had a similar question yesterday as well in terms of brand guidelines. How are you finding this process of imprinting your own identity into this and something that is very you and also kind of obviously listening to your client and making sure this fits into their world and what they want to promote and create? Well, normally, um, normally I have to say Eva and me are very lucky because when clients approach us, it's because they already know our work. So they are very open-minded, which for us is very helpful. But normally, it's not difficult to, to follow a brand guideline and make something outstanding, I think. Yeah. Also, when we work with clients, especially in branding, we kind of have a very collaborative pro process. You cannot have like a logo idea, make it and send it to the client already finished because they won't feel it part of them. They need to be part of the process. They need to understand the content behind and take on decisions, what is important for them. Because some clients approach to us and say, look, uh, I really want a brand with a custom made typeface for the logo. So we have to take that into account when creating the logo, of course. And others don't want that. They want like something more simple and yeah, which have to kind of adapt for everyone. Yeah, I think like more than following the brand guidelines when you receive a project is to be able to communicate with everybody involved in that project. I think it brings the success to it. Mm. Well, I'm going to show you as a detail for this project. We decide to be a little bit cheeky and to send this, this, them this proposal, which is kind of uh, imitators of Adidas. Uh, you, when you go to the beach, uh, you find them everywhere. They are fake Adidas. And we thought, oh, let's pro propose them this poster. And it was accepted. So, yeah. yeah so let's be more creative and all the imitators' logos. And they <laughs> accept it, which was very, very impressive for us. Like, okay, they have yes, sense brilliant. of humor. <laughs> <laughs> so we think that sometimes your clients can be very corporate and very kind of serious, but everyone has a sense of humor. So... Don't be afraid of offering things that you think are a little bit risky or that they are not going to like because you never know. Just try to offer your ideas and see if you're lucky. So out we of have that... someone asking, um, Caroline is saying, how do clients find you? Is it on your website, social media, or how did you create this traction? So for the first uh, bunch of clients came out of uh, the Panificadora theme, which is design blogs basically, or newspapers or things like that. But also posting things in Behance really works. We got some clients that way. A lot of them find us in Instagram, posting our work. And also the mouth to mouth works very well. Like you work with a client and they recommend you to another one and, and these things. So yeah. I think there are many, many sources for finding clients. You just have to use all of them in yeah. a powerful way. Just make, make sure to share your work, especially when you're starting and try to meet people. Maybe you get clients that way, but most importantly, make good work, even if it's personal projects that you launch and they are so good that magazines are going to speak about them. So if you can make that, clients will come eventually. So, yeah. Yeah. And also, I, th I think one recommendation for, for people that make personal projects is that you need to make something that is your dream work. Don't do something that you don't like because clients will call you for do that and not your dream work and they will be like, fuck, like I don't really like this career or we're thinking like bad things. You need to do something that really makes you passionate because at the end of the day, if you do what you like, they say that you never have to work one more day in your whole life. So yeah, yeah. Like one of our dreams was to rebrand a museum and that's why we made Panificadora. So yeah, hopefully one day we will have our museum rebrand. So. 
<laughs> awesome. And talking about personal <laughs> projects, do you mm -hmm. is that something you ever have time for, or um, is that still going in your world, or you're just jam packed yeah. with uh, client work? <laughs> so yes. obviously now we don't have the same time as before for these personal projects. But last year we we launched our mood clocks, which are some clocks that are moody, so they go from happy to sad, and and they are really cute, made of wood. And a couple of weeks ago, we launched a new typeface called Gothic Twins. So, yeah, because it's a Gothic typeface, so it was very funny to put Gothic Twins as a name. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. so oh, we are always thinking new projects. Yeah, sometimes it's just small ideas you want to produce and they look cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Keep yes. going. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's also, also we collaborate with some charities doing design. We will launch some things. So yeah, they, they are also personal projects, but they can bring something good for, for the humanity. So hopefully it's our little uh, gift to that to them. <laughs> so we want to share this poster for Converse again. It's nice that was doing a collaboration with Converse and GW Anderson, which were collaborating together. And we asked us to define art in a typographic poster. So we came out with this copywriting, which is art is not why, art is why not. Because uh, the way people advance in arts is not asking why are you doing this or why are you doing that, this thing, is to say why not to do this or why not to do that. And that's how art is created. So yeah, we think it's quite uh, interesting to define art. <laughs> and yeah, this is uh, Mika, the singer. I don't know if you know him. He is the lollipop singer, obviously. You should check his music if you don't know him. <laughs> yeah, I think he's French, half French, or uh, no, French. he's Lebanese, French. Somewhere. He's Lebanese, half Lebanese, Lebanese, half American, but he lived in in his childhood in Paris and London. Yeah, he's right. French. This is as where well. the link is. Yeah, yeah. from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he's I know city, him. citizen of the world. So we had a big chance of touring with him last year and we are working with him now, kind of working in his social media. So we've made some gifts for for Instagram stickers. Those are yeah, so it's just yeah, an ongoing project for his new tour because he's now touring well not now with the lockdown, but he's gonna take on his uh, tour, which is really cool. <laughs> They're so adorable. <laughs> yeah, so many of them. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. play them all. <laughs> well, and I would say that's all for the moment. Yeah, I mean, all there's a us. couple questions to, to wrap up with as well. Um, so Patrick hey. is asking, uh, how important is design work for the planet and or politics with your own, within your own studio? I think, uh, Marta, you started talking about this a little bit with your charity work, but... Um, yeah, how important is that purpose as well? So for us, we we are not interested in getting a political view on things, obviously, because each one of us have our views and that is not our intention. But what we want to approach with graphic design is to be able to make a better world. So with our little help, with our little uh, drop of sand into this, we want to help uh, maybe to to save animals or people now with this pandemic. And I yeah. think I think it's a better purpose than others, so yeah. Yeah, as designers as well, we create things and mostly physical things. So we're really conscious about being eco-friendly with materials. We're doing now some branding projects. We cannot show you yet, but we are really uh, considering in the packaging, what is the material, where it come from, how is it recyclable, all kind of things. So you may not make a political poster, but you still care about these things through your work, let's say. Exactly. So it's giving a bit of your approach into the projects in a way that the world is a bit better. Also, you don't offend anybody with, with your designs or things like that, like trying to make it friendly for everybody. Yeah, and I'm really interested in seeing, I don't know how much you can share this. Um, sorry, Stephanie, just in terms of your personal projects, I'd love to see more of the Gothic twins and uh, the clocks as well. I mean, is there anything you can kind of show in your portfolio or um, I don't know if you have that up somewhere, but I'd love to see those. Yes, uh, in the website, no, Eva. 
Yeah, so we put it up. Let me try. Yeah, you are sharing you the screen. Yeah, yes. you can have a look. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> can you see my website? Yeah. yeah. So this is the mood clock. And can I go closer? Yeah. So it's like a clock that becomes sad or happy. So it doesn't really give you the time, but it's really sharing the mood. So you're going to a meeting and maybe the clock is smiling. So that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> and it has like a lot of colors yeah we were selling them in our website for the whole year because we made a lot of them in wood and yeah, yeah we just sold out the last ones before the pandemic yeah and we we exhibited them in the dna in the exhibition last year in the festival oh yeah true that's the last typeface which is a gothic inspiration gothic twins <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to make you dizzy, but that's it. <laughs> it was inspiring, like these coffee high faces, but with a modern twist. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Martin is asking if the mood clock is going to come back. People want more of it. <laughs> um, there was a company that was interested in producing them with us. But their condition was that we produced like a million of them, even me under our budget, and they will sell them. But obviously, we don't have money for that. So if someone is interested, <laughs> give us a call. <laughs> yeah, we plan to create them with plastic or like recyclable plastic because the wood is quite heavy to kind of do it perfectly. So yeah, we're, we've put it on hold and we'll come next year when we have more time. Yeah. It's going to happen one day. We are already studying options. Yeah. <laughs> great to hear and it's great to see you work in different formats as well we've seen everything from you know the typefaces to the print and the clocks and it seems like it's endless really in terms of how you translate it into physical things as well that people can experience thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah i i have a question have you ever um done something or a project where you thought it's really great and you're on the right path and then towards the end you figured out that you were not and how how did you change it or what had it what has it taught you for the future mm, let me think because we are this kind of people that overthink everything we might start a project one way and completely change it the week after and and think that it was the right decision but Yeah, but the way we work is normally we will have more than one idea, let's say, for a project and we present the client three ideas, for example, and we can help them guide to uh, the best one. So I don't think because our project, uh, our process is very thinking and communicating with the client that we ever went till the end and changed completely the project. Because, yeah, because well, yeah. when you start doing a project, Uh, when you can see something is not working, you can try a thousand times, but you see it's not working. So that's when you when you change things. So, like of course we fail many times, but we never let these fails come to the public. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did share the American Apparel experience, so thanks for <laughs> an insight into some of the struggle, yeah, and the reality of it. <laughs> yeah, it's just. We want to share as well the bad side of things so everyone can see that um, it's not everything flowers, but still you can learn from everything, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> where, where do you take your inspiration these days during lockdown? Do you have any advice for our community? <laughs> It's yeah, quite like, hard. Yeah. Before we used to a lot, but... <laughs> I think Instagram is very inspirational. I love it. Um, yeah. As well, uh, design magazines. Yeah. And also, um, I guess uh, speaking with people, having really interesting conversations with them also inspire you for, for things that are not related to art, basically, I think. Yeah, but you have to keep up to date with magazines and things like that just to see at least what others are doing. You can kind of see what is uh, keeping working or not. <laughs> and you, yeah. you both live at different locations, right? Yeah, yeah. we live like one hour away. So are, it's yeah. really difficult. No. So how, how do you work remotely? Do you have any tips for our community out there? 
there is some apps for communication like Slack or we communicate sometimes even in Messenger, just like we keep sending updates of what we're working on and as well we in the morning we come together and divide the day what is the task to do and how we approach them. So yeah, we are in constant communication. Yeah. So communication is key. I would say yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because maybe like that day you have to do a brand design and, and an illustration. So you can say, okay, yeah, well, you do, I don't know, the brand and I do the illustration or the other way around. And, and we can show each other where we are at and the other one that is fresh from a different environment suddenly has a new idea. Hey, why don't you add this to the brand or why don't you add this to the illustration? So, yeah. so do, do you strictly separate your work? So one does uh, the illustration and the other one does the rest or do you swap files and then keep working on each other's files or... Yeah, we, we swap files. We cannot specialize each one in one thing because sometimes we have projects that are only brands or projects that are 3D or these things. So it will be unsustainable that only one person has the whole weight on that. Yeah. But, but yeah. So we tend to, uh, let's say, both do everything and then depends on the time and, and the limitations, we can split. Like maybe we don't have time to do the two things, both of us. So yeah. <laughs> And how long does it usually take you to work on a project? Do you feel now that you have to work remotely, it takes you longer than usual? Uh, I wouldn't mm -hmm. say so, right? I would say we are kind of no. same effective. We are working like normal working hours. So the only difference is now you are Skyping with your clients instead of meeting them in person. And yeah, you can put fun backgrounds in your Zoom meeting. So it's quite good. <laughs> So are you actually more productive? Because some people also say they are more productive because they don't have to commute and stuff. Yeah, I would say the same. What would you say, Marta? I feel the same, actually. Yeah. I feel the same as well. I'm more creative. I feel that. I'm painting a lot in my free time, but, but inside of the design studio, I think I'm the same. Yeah. Hmm. Do we have any more questions in the chat, Emma? There is just one uh, comment that I have to read out and because we're nearing our time as well, I, uh, it's a great way to kind of wrap it up. But James was saying, the Yaisa twins symbolize what it means to think out of the box, totally out there and <laughs> captivating. I've seen your designs everywhere. It's great to see the creatives behind them. Thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's really nice to that hear was... something nice sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah. you guys are doing some great stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, like this is just one of the many comments. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone, for watching. Her Harry Her is asking, do, do you find working together makes you more productive? Are you continually bouncing ideas off each other? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's always better to share ideas with someone else because sometimes you can be completely confused or locked or you don't know how to keep going. So talking to someone always helps, right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably on that note, it's, uh, it's good to wrap up uh, because we have pretty much come up to time. Um, is there any last sentence that you want to tell our community? Just thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Oh yeah, thank you for inviting us. And don't forget that through graphic design, you can change the world <laughs> to look good, not so bad. <laughs> yeah, and also that you need to practice a lot to become better and better. So all our support to all of you and good luck yeah. with everything. Yeah, like the, the eye of knowing when something is good and bad comes with time and with experience. Like obviously you might have taste and everything, but you need to really look at a lot of design and compare it to yours until you have that talent, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much the Yarsa twins, our guests today. Um, Emma and I are here every day, Monday to Friday from 12 to 1. Uh, tomorrow, don't forget, it's Fancy Dress Friday with Tony. Oh. So put on, Whoa. Do you have a fancy dress at home? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So our, gonna... deal is, our deal is that we meet in our fancy dress for Adobe Live and uh, people out there, uh, 
post a picture either on Instagram or Twitter and hashtag it with Fancy Friday streams. So we awesome. can see Ooh, it. So that's that's really deal. fun. So everyone yeah. can, can be in fancy dress with us together. So uh, be surprised what Emma and I are going to wear and especially Tony, the master of fancy dress, I, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's see. We will be... Please we'll join. Be <laughs> yeah, please join. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so I'll see you all back uh, tomorrow and thank you, Emma, for co-hosting. And thank yeah, you. tomorrow, um, don't miss it, fancy dress stream with Tony at noon. And thank you all for watching. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.